Welcome to the Thriving Tides podcast. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Julianne. If you're an entrepreneur who loves self-care, you're in the right place. We can't wait to share our experiences with you. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. So we decided to do something a little crazy for September, and this is also a bonus episode, and it's our first episode with video. Hi, guys. (laughs) So if you're listening to this and we don't have a video up, obviously we screwed up. (laughs) We didn't do it right, and it's going to be awkward as hell to edit this out. Yeah, we'll just leave it in. Yeah. We're not afraid of failing. That's <laughs> yeah, how we exactly. learn. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, so we decided to do something a little bit different for September. We gave ourselves a month-long challenge, mm-hmm. and it was pretty interesting. So, I, I don't know, Julianne, you want to kind of take it off? Sure, yeah. So, for the whole month of September, we told ourselves we had to get our asses out of bed early. Yeah. We wanted to set ourselves up for success on a daily basis. And so we kind of, but we weren't ready to jump into a 5 a.m. club because yeah, no. really, considering what time we were getting up before that, that was a big jump. Um, so we made a kind of a 6 ish a.m. club. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> which we'll tell you more about as we go forward. Um, but essentially, it was all about taking back our mornings, setting ourselves up for success and easing into our day in a more calm manner rather than just like, bam, shit, let's go. Um, Exactly. And we wanted it to be a really long challenge before we came and talked about it too, because honestly, I mean, the meditation challenge we did for just one week and we've been continuing with that too, which has been really great. But to have a whole month of data to be able to work with and talk about, I think has given us that much more learning for this challenge. So I'm really excited to dive in and share what we've been doing and what's worked and what sucked and <laughs> exactly <laughs> all the things. And it's kind of so true, though, that you do need almost 30 days because I felt like even meditation, I didn't do it every single day. But that week, it's so it's so much easier to do something for a week mm-hmm. than it is 30 days, yeah. especially during. And we did it the probably the weirdest time. And we're going to get a little bit into this, too. But September is when everything's changing. So mm-hmm. the when we were waking up at the beginning of September, it was super late outside. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it it's gradually got darker and darker and darker. And I, it was harder and harder to get up. But <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Big time. And, um, but September feels like a new beginning, right? It's like the second new year for a lot of people. <laughs> Steph doubts me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like, and we don't have children. We're not in school. Yeah. So like that does make things a little bit different for us. Um, for me, it felt like the week after September started, so probably like a week in when we hit Labor Day. That was my new year because that's when the deep sea closed, and I felt like that was a bit of a fresh start or a new beginning for me. So I definitely struggled more so in that first week because my schedule was still all kind of over all the place. place. Yeah, But um, it was, uh, yeah, it was a really neat concept, and I'm glad that we did it. Did you read the book? I did the read the book. Okay. Yeah. A couple years ago. Maybe last year. I did read it, though. I have it. Okay. Maybe um, I'll borrow that again, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I didn't read the 5 a.m. Yeah. club. I just literally mm-hmm. watched a, like, synopsis or whatever on YouTube and mm-hmm. kind of, you know. The problem is I... I don't, I don't agree with having to wake up early just because I'm not a morning person. So reading the title, I was like, this book does not bring me joy. <laughs> Pass. <No. laughs> Marie Kondo that. No yeah, joy. Marie Kondo. <laughs> uh, but it, it's true. So I always kind of stepped away from it. Um, mm. So that was kind of interesting to like try this experiment in a way. Mm-hmm. Luckily, my morning already started at like 7, 7.30. So an hour isn't huge um i'm sure 5 a.m would make a huge difference but yeah i don't know you what time did you usually get up it depended on my day right honestly yeah. entrepreneurship I, yeah <laughs> onto, hashtag entrepreneur hashtag. um but i you like in the past when i was still working a corporate job i was a 5 a.m or for a very long time mm-hmm. and then over the last year and a bit since I've been fully on my own, it really depended on what was on my schedule. Yeah. So I would take a look and see what do I got going on the next day. If I had to be at the deep sea, that usually meant I had to leave my house by 730 at the latest. So if I wanted to do anything for me before that, 6 a.m. I had to be up by, right? Yeah. Um, 
But if I wasn't there or something else is going on, then maybe I would sleep till seven or eight o'clock. But like, ask Dave, I do not sleep in. <laughs> he does. Oh, man. <laughs> we have a really interesting dynamic there. But uh, <laughs> for me to sleep until like eight o'clock would be unheard of. Really? Yeah. Even on the weekend, I struggle. Really? Oh, man. See, like, James has to wake me up on the weekends mm. because I'm like, <laughs> like I could sleep. Time to get up. <laughs> oh, oh, it's more shaking than that. <laughs> I'm surprised I don't have shaking baby syndrome, but yeah. for adults. <laughs> so if he didn't wake you up, when would you get up? Oh, uh, like, growing up, like, I've never been one with waking up mm. naturally. I can't. I can sleep for forever. Yeah. <laughs> and even when I obviously didn't have James, um... It was so hard to get myself out of bed. I would be a constant snoozer. Mm. I'd hit the snooze like it was nobody's business. I even considered mm. getting one of those clocks that you have to, like, it, like, wiggles and it jumps around. You have to catch it. Uh, but then I realized that's just not good for me. It does not bring me joy either. Yeah, you're like, this is not a good, positive way to start yeah, my exactly. day. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's funny. Yeah, I, I'm a sucker for the snooze button, too. And, like, if you consume anything from Mel Robbins, she will tell you how bad that is for your brain. And I know it, but I just can't stop. Why is it bad for your brain? Well, because you're kind of, like, waking up a little bit. Oh, so right? you're not And then fully. you're hitting snooze, and then you're going back in. And I don't, like, she's very smart and can put this in more scientific terms than <laughs> I can but it just really does mess with you like it can throw your complete your day completely off like she it says like if nothing else that you take from what I do like do not hit the snooze button really yeah she's very adamant about it that's so interesting and then, to so me. she pulls the like she's famous for her five four three two one go Whatever it is you're trying to get yourself to do. So she says, you know, when your alarm goes off in the morning, just go five, four, three, two, one and spring yourself out of bed. She's crazy. Easier said than done. I was going to say, who does that? <laughs> right? I don't. Yeah. No. And I if don't. you do, that's great. Yeah. Teach us. <laughs> Teach Please. us how do you do. But yeah, so like the whole point of this was that we wanted to test our limits and actually put a schedule. Because mm -hmm. uh, it is true as entrepreneurs, we tend to kind of not really have a designated time it's so easy to say oh i want to sleep in for an extra hour so why not i don't have a meeting until 11 so why would i yeah you know and it's so easy to constantly alter your schedule in a way mm -hmm. so actually designating time to have more time allocated to our morning routines especially i think that was one of the biggest takeaways for me mm -hmm. was how much it was beneficial for my morning routine mm -hmm. um but yeah there's so many different reasons why we decided to start with this challenge mm -hmm. but yeah and so what changed for you in now getting up at 6 a.m and giving yourself this extra time what did you add in or, or what did you do differently than what your life was like before september <laughs> yeah no kidding so all right. So when we started the podcast, I was already kind of getting into a better morning routine. I think we mm -hmm. talked about this a couple of times where yeah. I would literally just get up, watch some YouTube videos, go straight to work. Yeah. And there was nothing good for my soul, beneficial. It was garbage <laughs> in a sense. Like it was not a, a productive mm -hmm. way to start the morning. Yeah. Uh, but then starting Thriving Tides, I started getting back into yoga. I started journaling more in the morning and trying to be more mindful to start my morning mm -hmm. um, to really set myself off on like a positive you know, words. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I decided that I wanted to spend more time anyway. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was only doing 15-minute, like, yogas. Mm -hmm. Like, yogas. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, but with having the 6 a.m. club, we need to stop calling it club. We're going to get copyrighted. But, <laughs> <laughs> but with starting the 6 a.m. club, I found that I had more time and I wasn't rushing. Mm. So I could get deeper into my yoga. I could get deeper into poses and not feel rushed. Mm -hmm. I actually introduced a little bit of meditation, although I still prefer doing meditation after lunch. Mm -hmm. um, I still do my journaling and I would even read more in the mornings, which mm. was that was huge as well on top of my journaling. So it became a whole entire, like, it was a game changer. Yeah. Because I was so, like, super set up for success right from the get-go. 
and that I just go have my coffee. And because I did a little bit of yoga, I didn't feel inclined to get two toasts. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a toast and maybe some yogurt Mm. or I got a toast and some fruit, you know, like I was starting to make better decisions for Mm. myself already. Mm -hmm. And that was huge. And I also noticed it in my work as well. So that was the biggest thing was just the fact of giving myself more time. Other than that, like I said, going from 6 a.m. to 7, 7.30 is not a huge time frame, but it's enough that it can really give you so much more time. Mm-hmm. An hour is a long time. It is a long time. There's so much you can accomplish in yeah. an hour. Yeah, right? exactly. And then you're not rushing. You're not pushing yourself. And like I know you said too, probably like mid month that even James, your husband, noticed a change in your mood and your energy levels and that you just seemed overall like happier and and more excited which is awesome too oh yeah and it's funny because i was looking at these yoga decks the other day and they're pretty expensive and i was kind of second guessing (laughs) them and i told him about he's like do it it makes you it makes you so happy to do it (laughs) so like obviously that's a testament because it is true especially when you're not a morning person if you Mm -hmm. don't start your morning off right then your whole entire day is kind of set up for not being successful in a certain way yeah so yeah it's true Yeah. yeah it's tough it's um I used to love my mornings. Like, I used to pride myself on getting up at five. So you used to have the craziest morning or days. But, but, I, but at the same time, like, when I was reflecting on it in preparation to talk about this with you today, I wasn't necessarily doing it in a positive way. It was more to just do have more doing and not more being, yeah, which I think is the hugest distinction, right? So on the outside, it looked like, oh, look at Julianne. She gets up at five and whatever. Good for her. But like I was when I was really heavy into it, it's getting up at five. Uh, like the first thing I would do would check my emails because like my VPs and whatnot were always working whatever hours of the night. So I needed to know, did um, they email me at night, like overnight? What's going on? Do I need to respond to something? Whatever. Oh um, I'd head to the gym, get my cardio in come home, check my email again, probably get ready for work, hop on the bus, go to work, spend my whole day, come home, like work, go back to the gym. <laughs> like I was crazy. Oh my um, goodness. I loved, but like I was just, it was a rhythm and a routine and it wasn't necessarily like the most positive for me. I think if I had known more about mindfulness and all that kind of stuff at the time and being able to introduce that, but I mean, I'm doing it now and that's what really matters. That's true. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I need to go back to the 5 a.m. club because I don't have a corporate job that I need to be somewhere by 8 a.m. Most days, sometimes I do, uh, but it's not very often. So (laughs) six-ish is good for me. (laughs) I think one of the really important things that you just said was that you checked your email first thing in the Mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. That couldn't have been good. No. And I think, right? Like, it takes your whole day away from you, basically, yeah. right? Like, you start off being like, I'm of service to others yeah. instead of being there for yourself. I think that's been the biggest distinction. Um, so this month and this practice, what I've really, really tried to do is the only thing I used my phone for in my hour-ish to myself was to time my meditation. Wow. That's and good. that's tough. Especially when you see like little notification numbers or different things that it's like, don't look, don't Don't look, look it's okay, it'll still be there in an hour. Uh, But it's tempting, right? So it's so tempting. And it's so true. Like, I know I'm really bad at checking my phone, especially on social media. Mm. And like we were talking about in the last episode, too, was how we're so it's the highlight reel Mm. so of course you're opening up your phone to everyone's highlight reels and also like really crazy news going on since it's 2020 and so you're setting up your day for either comparison or comparing yourself Mm -hmm. or being really sad about the world so right away that's probably not a good idea and even with like your emails too like if it was a bad email you probably went to your workout feeling stressed out and yeah. you're already putting your body through stress when you're working out that can't be good for mm-hmm. your body like yeah that's well obviously working out's a different kind of stress it's a good stress but putting those together i'm sure it's not a good idea yeah well your mental state just isn't where it needs to be when exactly. you start your day off on someone else's agenda right so true and i now try like it's it's nice to try to avoid emails and notifications and all that kind of stuff as long as possible oh yeah um because i like to go into my day with a plan for my day for me 
like what I want to accomplish, what I think it needs to look like. And when you allow your inbox to dictate what your day is going to look like, then that can just be something completely different. I need to learn how to do that a little bit better. (laughs) It's tough. (laughs) It's super tough. Yeah. Yeah. So what does your morning look like now? Like, so what what changed in your 6 a.m. routine? (sighs) What changed? Um... A lot. Well, having a routine in general has been really great. Again, um, I was doing it really well last year for a while. And then I think just like a lot of stuff just rocked me this year. Yeah. Um, As with many of us, I think. But uh, and I let that be an excuse for a really long time, too. But like we're still here. We're still I mean, we're so fortunate to be here in PEI, especially that we can still feel like our life is mostly normal. Um, So. I tried a few different things when I first started, like at the beginning of this month and we were really working on it, I would do like a meditation first and then move into a bit of yoga and then do some journaling after that. But I found just straight from work, waking up to meditation, I was like, oh, I'm going to fall asleep. Yeah, I can't do this. That's why I do it after lunch. (laughs) Oh my goodness. And so I switched it up. And even one day while I was, um, just going through YouTube because I'm trying to be like stuff over hey. here. Uh, <laughs> I came across an interview with the author of the 5 a.m. club and he was talking about the way that he breaks it down is the first 20 minutes is um, movement. The next 20 minutes is mindfulness. And then the final 20 minutes is um, growth. And I don't know if those are the exact terms that he uses, but basically, so then I started doing a, 20 to 30 minute yoga practice as soon as I woke up nice and then I would take 10 ish minutes to do a meditation journal out my thoughts and then take a bit of time to like read a chapter and whatever whatever book I was reading for personal growth yeah um so that's now what I'm doing typically most days I don't always get the reading in in that time frame it depends on how long i move my body and also just how deep i go with my journaling because mm. if i find i'm really into it i don't want to be like oh time's up <laughs> <laughs> um i need to keep going right if it's pouring out of me then i don't want to stop that i'm discovering the meaning of life oh gotta stop <laughs> yeah timer's up let's go let's go <laughs> old julianne might have done that <laughs> but i'm learning to sink deeper in so Um, I'm really enjoying that now. Um, and even trying that, like, as soon as that hour or so is up, not to be like, oh, great, I can check my phone now. Right? Uh, Like, still trying to just ease in and be like, okay, we're mindful. What's next? I'm gonna, you know, am I gonna get ready for my day now? Or do I get to stay in my pajamas for a little (laughs) bit longer? When do I, like, am I hungry? Am I gonna eat breakfast? Like, kind of getting, it, it really allows me to get in tune with my body by taking this time for myself. Yeah. At the start of the day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's really good. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you. I try. Um, But it's a challenge. Like, so for me, my partner is a night owl. Is he? He is. Oh, like sometimes I'll be like, what time did you come to bed last night? And he'll be like, oh, like 1230, one o'clock. And then he's up at 645 to go to work. How? How how does he do that? Because on the weekend he'll sleep till noon. Like, so he, co- he stores up on the weekend, he says. Like, he catches up. Bodies don't do that, do they? I don't think so. I'm calling but, you out. <laughs> I'm calling friend. you out, Dave. <laughs> Love you, but <laughs> don't get it. Yeah. Uh, but I want to, like, so some, he gets not mad at me, but he's like, stop trying to, like, stay awake with me. Because uh, he's like, I know you need to go to sleep. <laughs> but it's that challenge because we both have busy lifestyles and whatnot. But um, when he's out at his studio... Because he does his own recording and stuff for his music. Um, he doesn't come home to like 10.30, 10.45 anyway. So usually I'm asleep by then, which is nice. Oh, man. That's crazy. I try to be. Especially if I need to get up at 6. Right? <laughs> I like a good eight hours of sleep. That's so what, true. what time yeah. do you go to bed to get up at 6? Oh, goodness. So I <laughs> intend to be in bed <laughs> by like... Highlight intend. Intend. By 9.30 so that I can read a book mm. for a half hour and hopefully yeah. go to bed by 10. Yeah. Because I'm one of those people, I don't naturally fall asleep. Like mm. some people, it takes mm-hmm. me quite a while. I have a very hyperactive brain in a way. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm one of those people that have to keep like the notepads by their mm-hmm. their lamp just yeah. in case an idea pops up. Because that's, <laughs> that's me. I'm an ideas yeah. person. Um, but anyways, 
So that's what I attempt to do. Mm -hmm. And so for the most part, like I actually, I think I did pretty good. I think for the most part, I woke up almost every single day at six ish. So like, <laughs> we love our ish. Ish. What does ish mean? So like six, like one. So James would wake me up at exactly six. Mm. So then he would again. He's my snooze. So it would be about six fifteen by the time I would get up. But I woke up at six. I just was kind of like laying there and like, you know that. The yeah. dreaming state where you're mm. just like, I am awake, but I could also not be awake if I close my eyes right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and some mornings are a little chillier now, too. So it's oh. like, oh, I'm all cozy, warm in my bed. Right. I don't want to get up. <laughs> well, because James doesn't automatically get up either. He's mm. one of those people that sits on his phone and mm. texts all the time. Mm. And so Outing I want to stay in bed with him because I hate being <laughs> I hate being the last one out of bed. I can't be the last one out of bed. <laughs> Because I make the bed. So that I'm just like, I, I need to. <laughs> I, I wrote here. I'm like, I like to get up before Dave. So he has to make the bed. Because the last <laughs> the last one up makes the bed in our house. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, he's going to get up soon. I got to go. I got to go. See, and I just make the bed because James will make the bed. He thinks mm. it's useless. <laughs> so nice, though. Right? It's so nice to get oh, into James. nice. Yeah, right. James. No, he does everything else. It's fine. I can make yeah. the bed. <laughs> yeah. Every but, household is a little different. Yeah, exactly. But I think that's hilarious. Because like, mm-hmm. it, it's true, though. Why would I? Because then I'd have to get out and mm-hmm. then I'd go into my little mindful room. Yeah. My little yoga room. Yeah. All stressed out that my bed isn't made. <laughs> <laughs> How can I possibly relax knowing this? Mm, oh, my goodness. My bed sheets are completely un- all over the place. Mm. <laughs> that's awesome. So you guys would typically you'll get up at the same time ish. Ish. Like once, like out of bed at the same time. Yeah, I guess he's already up. So like I get like out, physically out of bed, <laughs> physically out of bed. <laughs> Are we glad we're doing video yeah, for this. <laughs> you now can you see our visual. gestures. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I get out of bed. Oot. Um, usually at around six thirty ish because I do my gratitude and dream journal in my bed. Right. But then I do my yoga room and yoga journaling. I have like a whole bunch of journals now. It's crazy, but. So in a, I am awake. I'm mm-hmm. just in bed till 6.30, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. But I it feel does. like it does count because I'm still actively doing like my gratitude list and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it counts. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You're just starting there and then moving. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, it's all cozy. Like you say, it's cozy. And yeah. It's nice. Yeah. I give you a check. A yes. <laughs> a yes for success. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. How did you find the waking up at 6? Some days I hated it. Yeah. Um, and then some days it was super easy. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, and, and even still, like most days I would still get up by six or shortly after. I also am a sucker for the snooze button. It should never have been invented. Right. Um, I blame an ex relationship for that because I used to be like my alarm would go off and I would get up. And yeah. then my ex was a snoozer. Mm. And I got used to just hearing. The sn- I, I don't know like and it was his not even mine like it wouldn't be my time to get up his would be going off and he would snooze 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 and I think I like adapted that or adopted that and I just can't let go I don't know it's weird man but uh I it's it's nice like I like getting up and even I find six during the week I'm now still able to get up a little bit earlier on the weekends although sometimes on the weekends I don't set an alarm Wow. And I know Dave is going to sleep like super late. Um, so I wait until I naturally wake up. And I think that's really good, at least one day a week to be able to give myself that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that feels really nice. And then it makes it easier when 6 a.m. rolls around again on Monday to be able to get up because I'm fully rested again. Yeah, exactly. Because I think one of my key things is I don't want to do this if it means sacrifice and getting enough sleep. Yeah. Because sleep is so important. It's still the key part of it. Because mm-hmm. I, yeah, I have heard some people do the 5 a.m. club and they would be like, oh, yeah, I only got like five hours of sleep. Like wearing mm-hmm. that like a badge. And mm-hmm. all I'm thinking is, well, what's the point of all that preparation and whatnot when your mm-hmm. eyes, I could t- clearly tell you're tired and you're drinking yeah. five coffees mm-hmm. in front of me. Is mm-hmm. that really beneficial? Right. Right. And it's just, yeah. and I'm pretty sure in that 
I don't think in that book they talk about sleep and the importance of sleep too. It's it's so huge. Like it's everywhere. We know that. But like, again, we're thinking about culture and the, uh, like entrepreneur yeah. culture that it's a badge to not yeah. get enough sleep. Which yeah. is a, yeah. <sighs> Look at me. I worked eighteen hours yesterday. Yeah. and Slept for two, and I and drank I woke twenty up at cups five, of coffee, and and I yeah. did a crazy workout, and yeah. I did. I read a whole book at five a.m. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like cool if, if you're doing that and you're doing it and taking care of yourself but yeah it seems like a lot of pressure it's interesting what you say about like the hustle culture with entrepreneurs and whatnot and like oh look at me go i've got all this stuff done and i probably don't remember the last time i drank any water because all i'm drinking is coffee to keep myself going and yeah. uh that reminded me that another big change that i made this month specifically is I'm limiting myself to one cup of coffee a day. And it's not even that I was a crazy coffee drinker before, but I've heard it from people before. And I know that coffee after noon is not good because it can stay in your body for a long time. It can really impact your sleep. And, you know, we were just talking about the importance of that. Um, so I only have one cup. And if it, I hit 12 o'clock and I haven't had one, then I just don't have one that day. And you get, I survive. What? <laughs> I know. I know. It's shocking, right? How do you even get to 12 o'clock without having a coffee? Sometimes I just get busy and forget. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I don't think I really even need it. I, But I truly just do enjoy coffee. I, I really say, like it. I do like the... I enjoy the taste of it. I'm mm. one of those weird people. I've always enjoyed the Same. taste. I've never yeah. thought it was bitter. Yeah. But... Yeah. So uh, I, like I, mean, it. I was drinking coffee since I was like 17, so it's not good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But... but no, it's kind of true, though, like that probably impacted your whole entire day mm -hmm. because you only designated one. And do you think that it was part of the 6 a.m. waking up like that inspire? Yeah, kind of I think it's been a snowball in a good way. I think we yeah. talk about snowball effects usually in a negative way, but this is snowballed in a positive way yeah. that getting up early means I'm more mindful about myself. I'm more in tune with who I am and what I need. And I recognized I don't need all this caffeine in my body. Or, you know, in the afternoon, if I still want a nice warm drink or something to kind of soothe me in some way, then like tea is an option as well. Or like the odd time I might have a decaf coffee if I'm at like one of my favorite coffee shops or something like yeah. that, right, for a meeting. But uh, I don't seek it out and I don't miss it. Yeah. Oh, no, it's totally true. It's funny that you say like snowball. I, it's funny because we didn't go into this challenge, challenging ourselves on another aspect. Because mm. I actually quit coffee, except for the weekends. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I only drink green tea in the mornings now mm. because I found myself like having the hard crashes, even though I got good, like good amounts of sleeps. Mm -hmm. But uh, apparently coffee just does not work with me, apparently. Fair. But the snowball of waking up in the morning mm -hmm. inspired me to do more beneficial things for myself and that mm -hmm. was kind of one of the weird ones that kind of natural is like i have a lot of green tea i i went to costco once and i got like a big ass thing of green tea <laughs> it will so last like, you your entire life exactly so i was also <laughs> kind of looking at my tea stock and said hmm this isn't good mm. so i should drink some more tea <laughs> um and plus i was yeah i was watching a bunch of you know health health stuff on right. youtube and they're saying mm -hmm. how too much coffee is not great like it's not it's not awful yeah there's but it's worse not, things there's worse things but at the same time it's not it doesn't especially after one cup of coffee it can actually mm -hmm. do more harm internally to your body mm -hmm. and makes you more anxious and as a person with anxiety drinking coffee is not mm -hmm. a good idea yeah and I've heard that green too. tea does have the caffeine in it but i find that it's not a high it's like a consistent mm. you know i don't know yeah it's i've heard me. that too yeah 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 i like it it's um i find not or just all the things that i'm doing for myself right now makes a difference right and it's yeah. who knew that starting with just getting up a little bit earlier made a difference would make such a difference throughout the rest of our day like i thought 
oh, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> yes, I knew. When we said we were going to start September 1st, I was like, okay, we, we can do this. We literally met up and we're like, do we want to do this? Are, are we sure we want to do this? <laughs> we really committed. Are, like, are we, really maybe, do this? maybe Steph will screw up and then I'll, you know, and then I'll not want to do it. And like the, we did in the beginning message our, each other a yeah. little bit, but then we also, I think both realized we need to not be on our phones. So yeah. the, but how do you message yourself? Like, telepath like i woke up at 6 a.m Steph, i'm up oh shit i'm not supposed to be on my phone <laughs> put it away put it away so uh then we just learned to trust and yeah i mean not that we didn't trust each other to be doing it but sometimes it's just nice to know you got a buddy doing it alongside of you well that is the account not accountability because again we don't mm-hmm. want this to be a challenge where if you don't complete full 30 days that you know it's bad yeah um but more and more so in the sense of even the fact that we could talk to each other and be like, oh, yeah, I just didn't get a good sleep because I got processing a lot of things. Because mm. that's the thing, too. When we're processing certain things, we want to stay in bed for just a little bit longer because yeah. mentally we're exhausted and that makes us physically exhausted mm-hmm. to a certain extent. Yeah. And having someone that knows that you're going through something and including a, like a challenge mm-hmm. is kind of almost comforting in a way because I could be like, oh, Julianne, I didn't get that great of sleep. Sorry, I can't blah 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 yeah you know and so you handled the record or editing the videos and or, yeah or, oh my gosh the episode <laughs> now that we have video going i'm gonna be all screwed up yeah we're gonna be confused a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh but it's finding a balance with each other too and yeah. just kind of figuring that out and and knowing what we can take on like i i woke up one day with like this I, you can't see me if you're just listening. I'm really noticing that recording. <laughs> see, this is totally taking us a while. But for those of you who are listening to this as a podcast, I am basically <laughs> look like I like a crooked neck. <laughs> So clearly, Julianne is going like like this. Um, (laughs) Maybe I'll post a picture of it so everyone else can see it. But um, I still got up and tried. I did my best. But I went back to bed like an hour later after taking some pain meds and slept till 2 p.m. But that's what your body needed. And I was like, wow, that is totally what I needed. And like, I couldn't even like write. Like, you should just, I came upstairs and Dave was just like, what is wrong with you? (laughs) Like, what's going on? And like, sidebar is I hurt my neck on our vacation on Steph's honeymoon back in January. (laughs) (laughs) No, you think it is awkward when I say this. Um, And it hadn't bothered me since January, but. I don't know if it's just like emotional, physical, different things happening all just kind of showed up that one day. Luckily, only lasted that one day. But yeah. that's where it's just learning to like give ourselves grace and And to easy. clarify, she hurt herself on a water sport injury. So you <laughs> people get your minds out of the gutter. <laughs> I didn't go there, Steph. Come I on. Went there. <laughs> That wasn't even around. I was nowhere to be seen. You guys did catamaran that day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. We, were, we were on a boat. On a boat? On a boat. <laughs> um, anywho. Anyways. <laughs> but yeah, it's just interesting to see how different things can show up in our bodies. Um, and that we just, the more in tune we can get with them, the more easily we can work through things as well. Because I think intuition. if I didn't recognize that I the old me might have pushed through it and tried to do all these different things but instead I just like cleared my day and said like no nothing and luckily was able to do that exactly um, but I think just the time I've been spending in the mornings lately has allowed me to be much more in tune with me exactly and bringing it I always have to bring it back to self-care it's also having a self-care practice in the mm-hmm. morning mm-hmm which is huge because we always tell people after a long day, especially a hard day, you want to do some self-care after mm-hmm. the long day. But what about before? Yeah. Right? As much self-care as you can pack into your day, I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> but you don't stress I mean? yourself out about yeah, it. Yeah, don't stress yourself out about it. <laughs> but it, it's kind of true that what, what you're saying, too. It, it's being intuitive with what you really need right now. Mm-hmm. And we are going to be doing some worksheets. Yes. Because I love my worksheets. Steph and her worksheets. My They're worksheets. Amazing. <laughs> um, and we really would love you guys to try it. But again, mm-hmm. be 
in a way gentle with yourselves uh even though we're calling it a challenge we Mm -hmm. i don't want it to be well we don't want it to be a challenge where you feel pressure that if you wake up uh at a different time um than you originally set the intention to that you're not hard on yourself because i Mm -hmm. think that's the thing too with like these challenges and the 5 a.m club there's this oh you're not doing it perfectly Mm -hmm. well you suck and that's not true because we're all so different and like we were saying earlier we're all different entrepreneurs with different schedules i start my day at nine for emails and then 10 for starting to talk to people (laughs) but that's just because that's how i have to prioritize myself Mm -hmm. so i can give myself 6 a.m for some people they do have to wake up at 5 a.m to give Mm -hmm. themselves more time and if still waking at 6 a.m is still and you're still doing like a pretty good routine I think that's still great. So yeah. don't be hard on yourselves if you're not yeah. doing. Yeah. And look at what yeah. time you have. Like maybe you have 20 minutes. Yeah. That's better than zero. Yeah. Right. So focus on what you can do instead of being so worried about what you can't. Exactly. And if you start with even 10 minutes, then maybe you'll eventually grow to 15 to 20, so on and so forth. Um, but just be open to it and don't mm-hmm. be so hung up on This is the right way to do things. Exactly. This worked for this person, so it has to work for me. Exactly. Like, be willing to try different things. Like, we're into, like, you know, through this month, I'm not doing now what I did on September 1st. Yeah. So, like, and and in another couple weeks, I might not be doing what I'm doing today. Yeah. But, and that's okay. And I'm learning to just adapt and, and recognize that and... Find Enjoy what works the for you. journey. Yeah. Like that's a big part of it too is like how do we get you excited about it? Because um, we know there's so many benefits from it, but not in a way that's just going to like stress you up and curl you up and be like, uh, the I pressure. can't do anything. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, we will share probably just in the comments, I guess, on how to get this worksheet and what that's going to look like. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> pressure i know right <laughs> talk about not putting pressure yeah, on yourself say, i put it on Steph. but uh, <laughs> no we're, we're really excited about it because yeah. i think this has been a big game changer for both of us um and if you're like us you've probably seen and heard and read what a big deal having a good setup to your morning can be yeah but actually doing it is another thing and i'm so glad that we are exactly and I, I, I do want to, again, reiterate the fact, do it with your own intentions. Mm-hmm. And even if it is just waking up 10 minutes earlier to journal. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. So whatever works for you. Um, yeah. Because, yeah. again, there's no one size fits all in self-care. Never. Never. Yeah. Uh, but we're excited, you know, like if you use our worksheets or are doing your morning routine, like tag us in what you're doing and let us see it because that really helps inspire other people too. Right. And uh, we can cheer you a lot, cheer you on as you go, because we want to be here to help support others. Um, So talk to us. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely want to see those because it'll be super fun. Yeah. Cool. Love it. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning mm-hmm. in to another episode and our first video. So welcome. Well, I guess I can't say welcome into the closet as we're ending the episode. <laughs> thank you for being here in the closet with us. Yeah. There we go. All right. Take care, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Thriving Tides. Hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay connected. And remember, don't fight the rip currents.